What's up guys, Riley here with Hotson Motors and today we are going over our current giveaway truck, this 1972 Ford F100. So I've got to say, I say this every single giveaway, this is the coolest truck I've ever done. It's so freaking rad. We absolutely love it. And uh, I'm stoked to show you all the goodies that we put into this truck, all the positive, all the negative, you know, like with every single walk around video that we do, I'm never here to say that my poop doesn't stink. And there's always little things that can be improved upon, but I will say this is the truck until now is, is my proudest moment. I'm so stoked on this thing. It runs and drives so stinking good and uh, is just super nice. So I'm just, so stinking proud of this truck. Now, before we get into it we, and we get into all the details on the truck, I have to kind of put this disclaimer out there as we start this video. When we give away trucks that are cool like this and are really cool, like if you were to go and pay a shop to do a truck like this of equal caliber, you'd probably spend upwards of $100,000. It's just kind of the nature of these builds is they, they take a lot of money. It's a lot of labor to get them done. Uh, but when we give away a truck that's this cool, we always tend to get people who, for whatever reason, want to nitpick I don't know if they're just mad because we're giving away something cool and they're looking for any little minor detail that they can call out in the comments and so that they could then say, oh, well, this really isn't a great giveaway because it has this little dingleberry here and there. And, and this is why in these videos, I'm very open about little things that we might have overlooked or things that still need attention um, or things that the, the winner might have to continue to do because in all reality, we can't build these trucks to be 100% done, we would never finish the build. We would never get ready for the giveaways. These would, we would do one giveaway every 10 years because this is just the reality of building classics is that you're always fixing little things. You're always making it better day by day. That's the hobby. The hobby is to try to perfect your vehicle that is impossible to perfect. It's just impossible. I don't care if you're buying $400,000 vehicles, you can't perfect them, but that's the point. The whole fun part is to say, okay, I drove it today and I noticed I've got this little thing going on and I'm gonna fix it tomorrow. And that's the fun about it. And so again, I try to be very honest when we're doing these videos about what's wrong. And so if you're here to nitpick, I will do my best to show you the things that you can nitpick um, and not just glaze over them. So again, the, the, the truck's not perfect, but it is great. And it is the truck that I am most proud of that we've ever given away. We put just so much time and effort into it. And this one really, really, really shows. I love all of our giveaway trucks, but this one is just freaking crazy cool. So uh, yeah, it's great. Now, if you wanna see uh, how all this came to be. We've got a really lengthy build video showing a lot of the behind the scenes details uh, that you can go in and watch and we'll link that in the description. Go watch that build video. This like 30 minutes long of a ton of progress and everything on this. Yeah, I'm stoked. Let's go and let's just, let's just get right into this bad boy. Okay, so this truck is a 1972 Ford F100. Started off life as a two wheel drive F100 long bed. At some point in its life, somebody who I don't know who swapped this onto a 1996 Ford F250 Power Stroke chassis. So this truck has a 7.3 diesel and an E4OD four speed automatic transmission. At some point in time, this swap happened. I bought it from another guy, Luke F series on Instagram. Shout out to Luke, hooked me up on this bad boy. He bought it from somebody else. We don't know who did it, but regardless, the truck really drove excellently when we got it, sort of, but the motor was healthy, no blow by, and it shifted well. And it was like, okay, that's good enough. And then we took it from there and ran with it and created it into what you see here. The truck was a, uh, a 20 footer. Let's just call it that, a 20 footer when we bought it, but now it is freaking rad. So uh, like I said, 72 cabin bed, on a 96 F250 chassis. This truck came with twin traction beam front end. And so, you know, the scissor style four wheel drive, some of the worst suspension and steering ever created by Ford. And so we did a ton of work, axle swapping, painting this truck, doing a ton of work on the interior, lots of goodies that went into this. So let's jump in and walk around and, and do it all. All right, so up here in the front end department, first thing we wanna talk about is paint color scheme. So we've got Oxford white, just like always on all Fords. And then we have what is referred to as Harbor Blue. So this Harbor Blue is really cool. When you get shade, it turns a little bit grayer and indoors it's grayer. Then you pull out in the sun, it's nice and bright blue. It is a darker blue. I really, really, really like it. And so yeah, we got Harbor Blue in the middle, Oxford White cab uh, roof and Oxford White on the bottom section of the truck. But we fully trimmed this thing out. So it's got almost all new trim and any trim that we had to reuse that we thought was in good enough condition to reuse, we had stripped and polished and they look phenomenal. And then we touched up all the black trim all that kind of good stuff. So in the front end, we have our 72 grill, 
new grill inserts, and this is a new headlight bezels, but this is the original grill that came off the truck, straightened it up as much as we could, and then had it polished and made it really, really nice. So it's super nice and shiny. There's some few scratches and whatnot there, but in my opinion, if you have original trim, original sheet metal, use it as much as you can because it's the best stuff. It lasts so freaking long. I mean, it's really nice and high quality. So we reused that, but did new inserts and new headlight bezels and headlight buckets as well. So the headlights are nice and tight. They're not rattling around. You can adjust them and not be afraid that your adjusters are going to snap or anything like that. So all that stuff is brand new. So you can adjust your headlights perfectly, all that kind of good stuff. So you're not blinding anybody. Now you might blind them though, because the truck is very tall. It is sitting on 37 inch Milestar XT tires wrapped around 17 inch black rhino axle wheels it's the wheel called the axle and i like these wheels a lot come down here we can see these i like these wheels a lot because they are a modern take on a classic wheel you have bean shaped holes like you see on classic wheels that you don't see on any other modern wheel that bean shaped hole is very classic but you get that faux beadlock military look which we think is pretty cool on a classic so it's a good combo we really like it it turned out great cut out our our, our center caps so that we could fit your locking tubs through them as well so that you get that finished look up here probably one of my favorite things on the truck while we're in this area are these custom emblems that we have going on here so these were made by my friend Brandon. Brandon owns uh, Rad Machining and he machined up these custom emblems for us to say Ford 100 and then 7.3 and then our logo in there and then we painted them up with gloss black enamel paint. Uh, this side's not perfect. The other side is better painted. Again, when we're talking about the video, there's some things that are going to be just that we're not going to stop the giveaway from launching without getting into and this is kind of one of those things. So let's continue. But again, really cool. I'm, I'm really stoked on those. Uh, in the front end, we have this factory Ford bumper I got from my buddy Blake. He hooked it up and which is really cool because this bumper has one of these really, really, really rad short person steps. These are great, they're spring loaded, but you can put the step down or you can put up the, the, the second step and get a little bit of a higher step. These are hard to find, I've never seen one before in person, but they're pretty freaking cool. And we kept that on there because the truck is tall and it, it would be it is nice to have a little step when you're trying to work on it. We also have our bumper guards here. So these are new bumper guards. I love the look of that walrus tooth coming up in there. A new Ford letters on the hood as well. That just completes the front end, looks really nice. But my far, probably one of my favorite parts on this truck is down below. So let's squat down and take a look. Down here, we have a very expensive part of this build. This is our Dana 60. This is a Dana 60 out of what would be considered a brick nose Ford. This is a kingpin, high pinion Dana 60. One of the best front axles you could ever buy if you're looking for leaf springs. So this axle is just super valuable and super strong, stronger than ball joint axles because kingpins are stronger than ball joints. They have uh, more machine surfaces and everything. The turning radius is slightly worse than a ball joint axle, but they are very, very, very strong and very, very nice with all new steering components as well. Drag links, tie rod ends, all that kind of good stuff. So the truck steers just amazing. One finger down the road, super confidence inspiring, does not feel like you're steering an old 70s truck at all. The truck steers just like an absolute dream. Very tight, no need for any steering stabilizers. The truck is stable as can be. Steering stabilizers are just a band-aid for a problem, not a real fix. The real fix is to have all nice new heavy duty one inch, or one inch tie rod ends as well. So they're super heavy duty, really nice. But that was a very expensive part of this truck that we put in because we said, let's ditch the twin traction beam and let's go to something really nice like that. Um, in order to do that swap, we swapped out the traction beam and we put in a shackle reversal from Skies Off-Road Design. So we put in our shackle reversal, put the shackles in the rear, which makes it ride way better as well. When your shackles are in the back and you hit a bump, the shackles move with the bump. When the shackles are in the front, your shackles have to fight in a different direction that the bump goes. And so new shackles in there and then new leaf springs. These are factory F350 leaf springs. So just a two leaf spring pack with some really nice Bilstein shocks, Bilstein 5100s. And so the ride is really good in the front. It really is killer, super comfortable, super nice. Uh, also in the front, we have our LED headlights, making it nice and easy to drive at nighttime. They're super bright and we love them. As we move down the side, if you see, if you can see in the camera and in the shot, the paint job looks phenomenal. This is not the most expensive paint job ever, uh, but it was not cheap either. We try and find a nice middle ground and a paint job for these trucks, but the real magic comes afterwards where Sterling, my right-hand man, Sterling gets in there and works his color sanding magic. So we color sanded this truck like six stages of color sanding to get it to lay out super flat and just look super, super, super nice. So it looks killer along with all that new trim. So we did a uh, new spear trim, new wheel arch trim, um, new lower trim as well, and just bling this thing out. Uh, another one of my favorite parts though, as we walk down the side has to be these mirrors. Now I put up a poll on the Instagram of which mirrors you guys wanted. These are factory Ford mirrors. These are what would be considered West Coast Junior mirrors. So I've had a set of these for about five years sitting in a box, never used them, never used them. And then we got this truck and it was like, hey, these are meant for this truck. If you have a bump side, you'll see on the inside of the doors, there are holes pre-drilled from the factory that are filled with body filler so that you can run these mirrors. So the mirrors are super nice, offer a ton of visibility, and they look great on a big lifted truck. But we put this pole up between these mirrors and some door mirrors and the voting was so close 
that I said, nah, I'm just gonna do whatever I wanna do. The body was too close to call. So we put these big old mirrors on, polished these up. They look insanely good. And on a truck on 37s, you gotta have big mirrors. Little door mirrors just kind of look out of place. And so we love the big West Coast Junior mirrors. We voted for the other ones. I'm sorry, the, you're wrong. This is just better. Sorry, gotta say it. We walk down the side here. We have our gas tank still in the cab. And you might be thinking, wow, you left the gas tank in the cab. Why didn't you guys go ahead and, and put it in under the bed? I will say, when I first bought the truck, I thought, shoot, we're gonna have to fill that hole and put the gas tank somewhere else and maybe build a gas tank. Um, but once we drove it, it doesn't stink. You don't smell like diesel inside the cab. The truck primes instantly and it doesn't have any problems starting with having an in-cab tank. Everything is fine and it operates just as it should. And uh, yeah, you're not smelly. You don't smell like diesel at the end of the day. You don't get a headache from driving in it. So we thought, shoot, let's leave it alone. If it works, don't fix it. And so it works and we didn't have to fill the hole and find a new place for a filler neck. And it just works out great. And the tank capacity is plenty big. And so you can go cruise and be just perfectly happy. I don't know what else to say. So really cool. Um, here on the back of the cab, we have the back of the cab trim, which you're going to see a couple of little dents here and one on the opposite side, probably from just removing that. Again, this was a really good shape trim, original trim, but it was like, let's not waste the funds on that and let's reuse it because original trim is going to last forever. And so we stuck with that. It still looks plenty, plenty, plenty good. Sport Customs, this truck was a Sport Custom. So we kept our Sport Custom emblems. Um, this truck was a Sport Custom, even though now I don't know if it would be if it would qualify as a sport custom, I don't know. Uh, onto the tailgate. So um, back here, something I really love about the truck is this rear bumper. If you know Fords, you know that this is an OBS rear bumper that would have come off of the donor chassis, which is really freaking funny because I think it looks absolutely perfect on this truck. I love it. And like, I have a couple of these laying around that I've had from previous projects. And now I want to use this bumper on everything because I just think it's a rad looking rear bumper. Looks great on classics, has that look and we love it. But back here on the tailgate, we've got all new trim. So new tail lights, new bezels, new reflectors, new lenses, new tailgate panel, all new trim, top and bottom. We we're only missing two pieces of trim. There's a piece of trim that goes here and the same thing on the other side, but it looks complete without it and they're out of stock. And so it was like, well, we're not going to delay the giveaway for some out of stock trim. It looks great without it. Um, inside the bed is a... Uh... <laughs> Oops. Inside the bed is a fresh coat of bed liner, you know, just so that you can use this baby and toss stuff in it. It doesn't matter, you know, it's all good. I'll save that bolt for later. I don't know where that came from. As we walk around this side, you see our nice exhaust tip, our MBRP exhaust tip. So this exhaust is a four inch exhaust from the turbo back, uh, which is really a lie because the MBRP and all these other exhaust companies, they, they'll, sell, they'll sell you a bigger downpipe, but then it just restricts back down at the catalytic converter. They want you to use the factory cat and everything else. And, and so it really, it's, I, I wouldn't call it a four inch exhaust. It's, it's whatever your smallest point in your exhaust is, is where you're restricted to. So it's a four inch exhaust. Now I could be wrong. And somebody in the comments is going to say, you know, Hey, it's different. But again, we bought the four inch MBRP exhaust system. If that's what you'd like to know, it sounds just like a tractor. And we gave away a, a 97 F250 with the seven three diesel a couple years back. And uh, back then I said it and I'll say it again, they sound like freaking tractors, just rah, 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 rah. And uh, this one sounds just like it, you'll see here in a minute. But sounds great. And, uh, but however, you're not rolling coal, you'll notice this tip is not black um, because the truck does not roll a ton of coal. Only when you absolutely are killing it, you know, will it ever roll any coal, which I think is great for a classic. You wanna be able to cruise this thing and not be conscious about like, oh, am I blowing coal on everybody as I roll by them? So I actually really like that it's quick and you have passing power without rolling a ton of coal. So as far as rear suspension goes, this thing has a factory two inch block and then a helper spring so that you can tow a little bit without having a ton of a ton of sag. Again, 5,100 uh, Bilstein shocks in the back. All right, so let's go ahead and walk it up and go under the hood and uh, show you the goods that are under there. So now the first thing you might've noticed is that there's a hood prop rod that's underneath there. And, and you're gonna say, whoa, 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 that's not factory for a 71 body, what's going on? And so this is, the start of some dingleberries. Let's talk about a little bit of dingleberries and some things that we're gonna to continue to clean up over time under this engine bay and whatnot. Um, and so when they, when whoever did the swap and swapped the body onto here, they, they needed the space to mount like the evaporator box and the blower motor and some other things without having to, they just needed to make it work is what I'm trying to say. And so what they did is they built custom hinges that slide back into the cab and they actually work really well. If you've dealt with spring hinges, old school truck hinges, they're really hard to adjust because the springs are constantly fighting you trying to open the truck, but the truck is latched in the front and the springs are in the back. And so the springs are constantly trying to lift the back of the hood up. This is the battle we face with every classic truck. Hood, hood hinges suck. And that's why a bunch of companies sell billet hood hinges that have struts built into them and stuff like that. So rather than mess with all that, all they did was 
whoever did this swap, they built these hood hinges. When I got it here, I was like, they're not the prettiest hood hinges in the world. However, they really work really well. And the hood's not perfectly aligned, but it's not bad. It's, it's, it's better than most hoods that I see. So the hood's fine, but because of that, they have to have a hood prop rod and it works just fine as well. So I, it, it's, you know, it is what it is at this point, but it opens and shuts really easily. And you're not having to fight those hood hinges. And then you'll see as those hood hinges get old over time, people are trying to close their hood. It will bend the hood and you're not going to have that problem. So that's just the dingleberry I want to cover as we've opened the hood here. So under the hood, let me use my step, my two, two level step. Let's use my lower level. These are cool because you just have this little lever that comes down, holds your step in place, and then you just freaking hop on up here. So I might be a little tall. I really don't need it. Under the hood here, we have our 7.3. It's a little dusty and that's just okay. But we've got our 7.3 Power Stroke Diesel. This is a bone stock 7.3. Uh, we've got in here tried to clean up wiring as much as like, we can. The wiring's pretty good. Uh, it's not all over the place. It's really pretty easy to work on this thing. Uh, we've got new batteries and terminals, all that kind of stuff. We've got our radiator, our condenser and everything mounted up nice and tidy so it doesn't look like an absolute hack job. When we bought this truck, it had a pool noodle. Literally, the condenser was just in there, pressure mounted with a pool noodle. So we did a lot of work to get that all routed and mounted up properly. But the 7.3 in here is just a bone stock 7.3 and it runs like a freaking top. Now, this thing has, I got tired of bending over. I just want to show you that the step works and it's great. This truck has 285, I have to look the other hour, like 275, 285,000 miles on it, a lot of miles. Um, we gave away my own personal 7.3 back in 2020, 2020, 2021. We gave away my own personal vehicle and it only had 175,000 miles and this thing runs way better. It's got no blow by, like, shifts perfectly if you've driven these trucks with an automatic transmission you know that the e4 od trans has this goofy third gear torque converter lockup in this truck is super smooth as it gets into third gear and that torque converter locks up so again no blow by shifts great runs great has plenty of power like builds boost really quickly and so we were like let's leave this baby alone let's leave it bone stock and let's not mess with it when we got the truck we, we were looking at our budget and what we could do with our budget and it was like, well, well, do we do the interior really nice? Do we do the suspension really nice? We swap it in axle. Do we do a bunch of power mods and do an intercooler and stuff? But I will say, this is kind of the culmination of all of my experience for the last seven years building these old classics is that sometimes you got to leave good enough alone. And this was one of those times where we had to just leave good enough alone, which was this truck ran and drove excellently. And we didn't want to open up Pandora's box and start throwing power adders at it. And then all of a sudden, you know, this motor that's a little older can't handle the power adders. Whereas right now it's happy as can be. It's super, super, super happy. So we said, you know what, let's not do it. Let's just leave it happy. And it has been a blast. It's freaking awesome. And so it's one of those things where we, we didn't, it, it wasn't broken, so we didn't fix it. I'm really glad we didn't because it really is great. And I'm afraid that if we did go throw a bunch of money at it, it would be like, oh, we, you know, now the lift pump's gone bad and we got to run a fast system or, or, or something like that. And so there's just a ton that can go wrong. We thought, let's leave it good enough alone. And it's been wonderful. And I'm really happy that we didn't go crazy on that area because for a classic, the thing moves quickly, has great power, great fuel economy. You're not rolling coal. And so I'm really stoked that we didn't go into it like that. And we used the money in other places. So the money that we used there, we used to buy this Kingpin Dana 60 and fully refurbish it. I don't know if I said that. That's just not a Kingpin Dana 60. We rebuilt everything except we just, the only thing we didn't do is pull the differential out of the housing. All the other seals and bearings are all brand new. Brakes are 100% brand new from the booster all the way down. Everything's brand new in the brakes. Even the rear drums are brand new. So again, the axle was a lot of money and 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 that we could spend there because we didn't spend any money on power adders. And I'm really glad that we did. So let's shut this and let's go inside. But before we do, I forgot to mention something while we walked around this side and it's uh, the amp steps. This truck has amp steps on it. When we bought it, it had the steps, but they were wired to a switch. And so we got a new computer and new door switch switches and they work perfectly fine. Super nice, we've got amp steps. Now, before we hop in that interior though, and start talking about it, this is gonna be a great place for some haters to hate on the truck. And we're just gonna talk about this for a second. This truck has the 97 interior swapped in. When we bought it, it was like, this was the biggest decision. Do we go and buy a 70s, a bump side dash and, and gauges and air conditioning system? And do we rip this all out and start fresh? Or do we just make the interior super nice with the money that we have? And we said, you know what? Let's leave good enough alone and let's make this thing look really nice inside. And so that's what we did. We took this thing to Ian's Auto Upholstery and we made this thing look insanely, insanely nice. So we repainted the dash in a nice medium brown. We did brown distressed interior. The whole entire thing is upholstered on the inside. So that even though you're kind of sitting in a mismatched dashboard, it feels phenomenal inside. And so I want to make that disclaimer now that 
that yes, I would have loved to swap the dash out, but, I'm, but it, it is phenomenal. It's really nice. And so the gauges worked when we bought it. The steering column is already tilt. It has cruise control that works. The AC works, the radio works. The AC blows ice freaking cold, keeps up with Nevada heat. So it was like, shoot, do we spend $10,000 redoing this whole entire interior? Or do we just leave it alone, paint it, make it look killer on the inside or upholster everything? And that's what we went with and I'm super pumped up. So let's check it out. So starting here in our door panel, we have factory bump side door panels that were made over at Ian's Auto Upholstery and they look really nice and really killer. But then once you get into the truck, there's your 90s dash. Uh, that was never a dash color that you could have got. The 90s dash color was like an adobe brown. It was like kind of pinkish. We went with a nice medium brown to coordinate nicely with our brown distressed seats. Uh, we wrapped the headliner and the entirety of the inside of the cab. So A pillars, B pillars, all the way down the back of the cab is all wrapped and it looks really killer. It feels super nice inside. Uh, and then we re we rewrapped our steering wheel in leather, did our bench seat. This is an OBS bench seat. Did that in leather with a nice stitching design and it is amazing. So let's hop in and we'll talk about some of the features. So in here in the interior, we've got, like we said, we wrapped everything in this nice distressed brown, did this really cool stitching pattern. We got cup holders in the seat here. And then when two cup holders aren't enough for you, boom, you've got two more in the center console, four cup holders, because we love our drinks here in America. Uh, but yeah, we've got this nice distressed brown on black. So we did all the trim in here in black. We repainted everything, did a new dash panel. Um, we did all of this in fresh black and it, and it looks really, really, really nice. The black on brown, black carpet. And then you know, like we said, black trim pieces like headliner trim, all that kind of stuff, black dome light, all that kind of goodies. Um, we've got our, again, this is our OBS steering wheel, but our cruise control works. All of our gauges work and are accurate. And so that's great that, that this dash is not beautiful, I will say. However, it is nice that all the information is right there and clearly visible. Um, so when you're driving the truck, it does drive just like a 7.3 Power Stroke. Like it's not, it's not quite like driving a brand new truck where you have a thousand pounds of torque. But when you're driving an OBS, the, the, the joy of driving an OBS Ford is that you can relax because you're not having to pay attention to every little minor thing because they work really well and you can just enjoy driving a truck. This takes it to the next level. You're not worried about every little thing in here like you would be in a classic where things, little squeaks and ticks and all that kind of stuff are bothering you. You're just looking at the hood. When you're driving, all you see is your cool 70s hood and you, kind of, and you do feel like you're driving the 70s truck that's just like driving a modern truck. It's really great. So I do love it and I, and I am happy that we kept it. Um, over here in this department, we've got our uh, retro sound Grand Prix radio. This is like a 90s style. This is meant for Mercedes and BMWs of the 80s, but it fits these 90s trucks so perfectly. It looks great. So we've got our retro sound there. We've got our AC controls here. They all work. Everything works, blows ice cold air. Um, down here below, we've got our, instead of having our cigarette lighter down in there, we've got our USB port. Looks killer, works great. And then over here, we 3D printed this up. Um, big shout out to OBS Interiors. They sell this, but we're out of stock. And so we just 3D printed one. We don't sell these. I got to point you towards those guys because they sell it and they produce it. Um, but we just 3D printed one up so that we can mount our gauges in there. So we've got our boost gauge and our EGT gauge from uh, New Vintage USA. Uh, it's got a nice matching style of lettering and everything like that. One of the biggest labors of love in here was this dash. Again, we painted this and pulling this dash out and getting it painted and back in was a huge labor of love just for a few different shades of brown but it matches nicely and looks great. We also wrapped that dash pad in brown as well. So the interior looks and works phenomenally, but all of this works, your switches, your wipers, your, 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 your overdrive button works. And then down here, you've got your four wheel drive shifter and it all works. We also did new seat belts from Retro Belt. Um, so new shoulder belts and they are perfect. And no one likes getting an old crusty truck and having crusty seat belts. We hate that. Uh, and as far as the sound system goes, we have a uh, retro sound technophonic uh, amplifier. So it's hidden under the dash and it's powering our six and a half speakers that are down in some speaker pods. We didn't want to cut up our really nice door panels and, and they're brand new door panels. We didn't want to go cutting them up and making them look like crap. So we said, let's, uh, let's just do speaker pods down below. And then we've got some, some inch and a quarter tweeters from um, JL audio up there. And so the sound system sounds really nice. There wasn't because of the gas tank in the back, the fuel tank, we couldn't do uh, a subwoofer in this truck. Um, but still with this amount of sound, it sounds great. And really you want to listen to that diesel all the time. So I love it in here. It's comfortable. I'm six feet tall and I got plenty of headroom and uh, it's comfortable to drive and it's really nice. But again, you have a, you know, you've got a tilt wheel, which is sweet. And so, you know, I, you can tilt that wheel however you want it and it's comfortable and I love it. Um, so as far as the interior goes, that's it. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, and I love this truck. Now, normally at this point in the video, I'd say, let's go for a ride and let's go do some driving impressions. We're not going to do that today because we're going to make a long, 
driving impressions video where we hook up to a trailer and pull a little trailer with it, where we drive around, we'll go off road, we'll drive on road, we'll drive on highway. We'll do a long driving video so you can see exactly what it's like to own this thing in daily life. This is a 100% daily drivable truck. Get in it, turn the key on, start it and go. And so let's do that. Let's start it so you can hear it and then we'll end the video. Does great. And uh, you know, it's a tractor, blah, 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 but it sounds awesome. And it, and it just, you know, it does everything you want it to do. So again, it's an awesome truck. And so with that, we're gonna end this video. Again, go watch the build video if you want to know more about it. And then be on the lookout in about another week, we'll post another video of the driving impression so you can get exactly what it's like to drive this thing. But I hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot of information here. We did a lot to this truck and I'm sure there's a ton that I've missed. But for now, that's it for this video. We appreciate you guys watching. If you wanna win this truck and you're watching this video during the month of May, you can win by participating on our website, hudsonmotors.com. Every $5 you spend is one automatic entry to win. If you subscribe on our website, you can get five free entries for $10 by subscribing through our website. Make sure you follow along on Instagram as we post every single day, pictures of the truck and all that kind of stuff. So if you're watching during the month of May, you could win this bad boy. But if you're watching this after May, after the month of May in 2023 or beyond, uh, we're always giving away other cool trucks. So if you stumbled upon this video, you want to see what else we're giving away? Just check us out, hotsonmotors.com. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. And you'll see what other cool trucks we're giving away. I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.